Welcome back to Smith Coding and Design. This week we are going to attack things a little differently. I'm waiting on tooling to start the next tutorial series. So instead what we're going to do is go through how I set up the fourth axis on the tour mock and how I wrap my head around understanding fourth axis machining with the micro arc. There were a few struggles that I went through and I couldn't find a lot of reference material tutorials, especially when we were talking about machining rectangular stock and not something that is round. So let's go ahead and get into that now. So one of the first things we want to understand is our work coordinate system or how we're going to set up our cam operations. So typically I was used to either probing the corner of the stock or the corner of a soft jaw to go ahead and begin machining. It's, it's different on the fourth axis in that everything, at least the way that I am doing it, revolves around the A axis center of rotation, which is in the center of our material and in the center of our micro arc fourth axis. And so the center, if we look here, is actually in Z and Y. And so Tormach does provide a probing routine, which we will actually go through here in a few minutes to set that center of rotation. However, what was confusing to me and what took me a few minutes to understand is when we use that probing routine, we actually want to store our Z and our Y or our A axis center of rotation in a different work coordinate. So you'll see that I'm going to use G59 instead of G54. And so what that allows us to do is every time we power cycle our machine, we turn it on and then we reference our axes again, I can go back to G59 by typing G59 in Pathpilot, and then I can move Z and Y to the A axis center of rotation that I have stored in G59, and then switch back to G54 and zero the Z and the Y axes, which will go ahead and put me in the A axis center of rotation. And then all I need to do to prepare for machining is just go ahead and probe the front face of our material here, which would be in Z, which would be an X. So we run the probing routine through Pathpilot. We save Z and Y in a different work coordinate. And then after we turn our machine on, we go back to that other work coordinate, G59, go to Z0, Y0, which is our A-axis center of rotation, go back to G54, set our, or zero our Z and our Y-axis, and then simply probe an X. And that will set up our WCS for our fourth axis part. And so that took me a while to understand. And the other thing that we have to be aware of is that there is some error that can be introduced or will be introduced when we home our machine each time because our limit switches aren't perfect. But nevertheless, there are a few probing routines which we will go through later provided for free by David Looms that we can go ahead and after we have our material set up and we have our WCS set up or our Z0, Y0, and X0, we can run his routine and it will actually rotate plus, plus 90, minus 90, and it recalculate the A axis center of rotation for our rectangular stock here and then compensate for any errors that might have been introduced with our limit switches. So that's nice. The next thing we have to worry about that we don't necessarily need to when we're machining round stock on our fourth axis is the angle at which our A axis is when we zero it. All right. So what we want is the top of our material to be nice, flat and perpendicular to our tool. And so to do that, there are a couple ways. So we could do it manually by running a Heimer or a dial indicator across the top and making sure again, it's nice and flat perpendicular. 
the other thing we can do is we can probe two points on the top of our stock, calculate the angle at which our material is, and then rotate the A-axis to account for that material. So Mr. David Looms, again, provides a probing routine that does that for us. So essentially, when we use that routine, it will be important that we have our in g54 we have our z0 y0 and x0 set and then we can simply move from the center of our material probe one point on our stock and then the routine will move twice the distance so for example if i probe out here if we go one times the distance we'll be back at center and if we go two times the distance, we will be at the other edge of our material. So the probing routine, we can use it to probe both ends of our material. And then it will automatically calculate the angle and rotate the A-axis for us. So that's available for free by David Bloom. So I'll provide a link to his probing routines. And they, to my knowledge, only work with PathPilot. <clears throat> And then what I'll try to do is bring up a PowerPoint and simply walk through some of the math, some of the trigonometry on how this angle is being calculated and accommodated for by rotating the A-axis. So we'll, we'll go through that. So really the main things that we need to understand here or what I needed to understand was again setting the A-axis center of rotation in Z and Y saving that in another work coordinate and then all we have to do is probe in the x direction and then we have to make sure that the top of our material is flat and perpendicular to our cutting tool either using some sort of dial indicator or using a probing routine to account for the angle that our material is at so those are sort of the steps that we need to go through uh, to really prepare to machine our part. All right, so before we get into all of the PathPilot screens, here's how I have my machine set up to perform the A-axis center of rotation probing. Again, my fourth axis on the left side of my machine, I have a one inch gauge block in the ER40 call it face plate that came with the micro arc and my probe is sort of near the center, but in front of the gauge block. So the next thing we need to do is go to the fourth axis rotary tab in PathPilot and then enter the diameter of our stock. The next thing we want to do is enter our work coordinate offset. Again, we want this to be something other than G54, so that way we can save our A-axis center of rotation and then switch back and forth every time we power cycle our machine. So once we have our work offset chosen, we enter it and then we go ahead and press find the A-axis center and then the probing routine will begin as we'll see now. All right, so now I've pressed the probing button. We'll begin probing our one inch gauge block. So you notice we're just sort of probing the outside contour of the gauge block. We'll then go to the other side, probe, and then we'll come back and probe the top and then come to the front side again. And that's really all there is to it to setting the axis center of rotation. You just use the built-in probing routine. And after you've finished, you'll notice that there is a value in Y center, Z, Z center, and you will just go ahead and click zero WCS at center. And in my example here, I'm using G59. So I'd be able to go to the offset page after I've pressed that button and I would see the Y and the Z value or my A axis center of rotation saved in that work offset. And again, you can use whichever you choose, just use something other than G54 and you will be fine. And so now we'll go over sort of how I set up or how I place the stock in my vise. And then we'll go over the probing routines. All right, guys, here's my piece of three inch by three inch stock. I've already went ahead and prepped the ends so that I can put it into my self-centering vise. So I think you would want to at least prep one side, the side that's going inside of the vice jaws. And from there, all I'm going to do 
is just go half the distance inward and go ahead and score or mar the material just to make a nice line so that I can line it up in my self-centering vise. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now and then I'll see you guys over at the machine. All right guys, so here we are at the machine. I hope you can see that I have the line I made in the center of my material lined up with the zero on the center of the vise jaws. And so that's how I'm going to align my stock in the vise jaws. And so now what we need to do is make sure that this face is nice and flat and perpendicular to our cutting tool. So we will go through that next. All right, so bear with me here. We're going to go over this PowerPoint slide and I will attempt to describe to you how the probing routines work. So the first thing that we are assuming here is that you've ran the A-axis center of rotation routine. You have your stock in the vise. You switch from G59 or whatever you've chosen back to G54 and set your X, Y, and Z zero. So your center of rotation has already been entered you are ready in terms of where you think the center of the stock is. And now what we're going to do is correct for errors in the angle of our material and in the center of rotation based on the slight variations that our limit switches can introduce. So how do we account for the angle at which our material is at, right? We want to set our A axis zero such that our piece of material is normal or perpendicular to our cutting edge. So one way you could do that is manually, again, just sweeping a dial indicator across, or you can use your probe and you can use the free routine provided by David Looms. And so how does that routine work? So it's pretty simple. We are essentially going to probe two edges of the stock. And the way the routine works is basically since we have our Y zero already set, we're just going to jog some distance away from zero close to the edge of our part. And then we are going to hit cycle start and run the script. That script is going to move in the opposite direction. Well, first it's going to probe down and capture the height Z1. And then it's going to move in the opposite direction two times the distance. So if we jogged from the center over here and we went two times the distance back, one times the distance gets us to the center, two times the distance gets us to the other edge because we are assuming that our piece of material is perfectly centered with our A-axis center of rotation. And so when we move to the other edge, again, we do a, another probe in the Z direction and that height becomes Z2. And by the way, since we jogged some distance over and then initiated the probing routine, we know that two times that jog distance becomes the distance D or the distance between the two Z touches. So we know the distance and we have our two heights. So what we can do now is we can essentially just create a right triangle. We can use some basic trigonometry. So what I've done here, so the first thing that I want to do, and if we visualize taking this piece of material and just moving it down to the floor, so we would be subtract, subtracting Z2 such that our top point here would be on the ground. And so what that would do is it would leave us with the triangle shown here at the bottom where Z2 is all the way collapsed to nothing and Z, the distance of the side, the right side of the triangle here would be Z1 minus Z2. So all we need to do is basic trigonometry now. We know, if you remember, I have written here, uh, Sokotoa, so we know that the opposite over the adjacent is equal to the tangent of theta, which is the angle that we are trying to find and account for. So all we need to do to find that angle is take the arc tangent of this side over the distance. That's it. And then once we have that angle, all we need to do again is rotate the A axis to account for that angle. And then we wouldn't be nice and normal or perpendicular to our cutting edge. So it's that simple. If the angle was in the other direction, your Z2 and your Z1 would switch and it would be Z2 minus Z1 over D. 
So that's it in terms of making sure that your material again is flat and parallel or flat and perpendicular to your cutting edge. So now what we want to do is move into accounting for the A-axis center of rotation error that we might get based on using limit switches. All right, so here we are running the first probing routine. And you'll notice here that I have jogged away from center. I'm moving down and getting ready to press cycle start. Because the probing routine works based on how far you moved from the Y0 position, it doesn't matter which side of the stock you start on. And again, you're just probing those two points, and there you go, the A-axis adjusted for the angle. All right, so let's go ahead and look at the next probing routine where we account for any errors in our A-axis center of rotation. So again, we're first going to, or I'm first going to assume that you ran the first routine and your stock is nice and perpendicular to your cutting edge. And so what's going to happen when we run this probing routine is we're going to move to our center or where we think the AX center of rotation is in terms of Y. And then we're going to probe down and grab a point called Z1. The next thing we're going to do is rotate plus and minus 90 degrees and then probe that same exact spot on either side of our material. And if we look down here at our stock turn 90 degrees, you see that our center of rotation is just simply in the center of our material. So that's all we're doing here is we are accounting for any errors introduced by our limit switches by, by setting our Y to exactly the center of our stock. And then what we do next, because now we know the thickness of our stock by probing both Y1 and Y2, when we flip it back 90 degrees, where again, it's perpendicular to our cutting edge, all we need to do from this Z point is go down half the distance between Y1 and Y2, and that would give us our Z0. So by essentially just rotating plus or minus 90 degrees and essentially grabbing the two sides of our stock, we can calculate the point in the center and use that to correct for our A-axis center of rotation in Y and in Z. So hopefully that helps. All right, so now we run the second probing routine. So we're going to go plus 90, minus 90, probe the exact same point, and then we are going to use the information to accommodate for any of the errors introduced by the limit switches. So hopefully that helps. If you see any mistakes I made in my interpretation of the probing routines in the presentations, uh, please let me know and please like and subscribe. Yeah.